This morning I'm going to start into this whole process of the harvest. And I've been preaching about the harvest. And, and one of the things that, that, that we, we look at is the size of the harvest. I've preached that before. and I've talked about the amount of the harvest. You know, believe it or not, I believe that every person that's sitting in the side of this congregation knows the need of reaching the harvest. The bad thing is, is a lot of us are not ready to reach the harvest because we don't understand exactly all that's going on. We don't know the time frame and we don't know all the, the necessities, but it is time for us to be concerned about getting people saved. See, and leading them, listen, not just bringing them to church, but reaching them, the, reaching this lost and dying world for the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. It is important for us to of the hour. Last week I stalked, talked a little bit about that and I preached on that. But this, today I want to talk about grow. I want to talk about something that is God, uh, one of the most godly principles, and that is growth. I believe that all of us should grow. I believe that it is a principle of God that growth is something that God trains and teaches us. The Bible says God gives the increase. We sow and, and we water, but God gives the increase. And it is God's will that things grow. Amen? Amen. That God designed His creation to grow. God designed things to grow. From the seedlings, they grow into to beautiful trees and, and flowers. And we see that from the, from the seedling, we see that we come and we see all of the nature of growth from everything that God has created. If somebody asks you whether it was the chicken or the egg which came first, I can tell you right now in my biblical knowledge that I have, which is very limited, but I will tell you God created the chicken first. Amen. So the egg could recreate. Amen? Amen? Some of you, I just messed your theology up bad. Amen. In this process that God created and God gave us and God designed, it is for us to God's will for the church to grow. It is God's will that everything that has birth grow. God's design for that speaks to us. Peter is seeing the need for the church as he saw the church and saw the sometimes of the belief. He saw that that happened and he and as, as Peter uh, jotting down letter uh, and, and Peter and eighteen passage. to do so three it says you therefore beloved since you know this beforehand beware lest you also fall from your own steadfastness being led away in the same error of the wicked he goes on he says but grow in the grace and the knowledge of our lord and savior jesus christ to him be glory both now and forever amen when we look at this passage of Scripture and we hear the word of the Lord as he speaks to us, he speaks to us about growth. Now, it is God's will that things grow. This is, uh, go ahead and pull that, that slide up there. From everything begins, has a beginning, and everything has a source. The seed was given. The, sword, the, the seed begins to grow into a plant. The plant begins to grow and produce fruit. And the problem that happens a lot of times is, is we don't see the proper growth. Everything grows. Everything has its process of growth. I remember when I, I was just a, a little kid and I was very uh, uh, stunted in my growth. I didn't grow very fast when I was little. I, I, matter of fact, the doctors were concerned about it. My mom took me to the, to the doctor and, you know, they give you those percentiles of where you are. And I was in the bottom 30% of the percentiles. And the doctor, he, he was looking at me and, and he kind of, we, we, we just had moved to this community. And so he, I was on the, you know how you sit on the, the, the table there and, and the doctor walked around me and he looked at me and he looked at me and he walked around the other and he looked at me and he looked at me again and my mom goes is everything okay he goes yeah he's just really short <laughs> but the doctor said I, I think he'll come out of that because then he put his hands right here around the backside of my neck and he started like pulling up and he said I think we can stretch him 
I'd never met this guy in my life. I thought for sure this guy was going to lay me out and pull me. But I'm going to tell you something. I, I, when, when I begin to think of that, he, he said there might be some complications and there could be some things wrong. There could be this. And, they, and he went through all these things. But he said he will grow. We're just not sure how much. I did grow, but it wasn't very much. But, but as, as the process of that happens and things, things grow, sometimes it's delayed in growth, sometimes it's stagnant in its growth, sometimes it doesn't grow as fast as we want it to grow, but everything that God has ordained should grow. Amen? Amen. Now, I, I, I look at this and, and Mark, come up here, come up here. I want to tell you that, that sometimes when, when we look at God's growth, I, I, get, I get aggravated because when, when, when I get to heaven, I'm all in this <laughs> and I want to say, this is me. I'm going to say, God, why didn't I get all that? It wasn't predestined for you. It wasn't predestined for me. No, God didn't have a design. He, had, he has us short people so that we'll be the first to drown when it rains. So. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Uh, I, I tease him all the time, but... You know, he, he got all the height and I got the size. And so we're, I got all the good looks and he got the height. Amen. <laughs> but when we look at this idea of growth and how we grow and the way we grow and the things that we do to grow, it varies between each of us and everything grows. We should, we should grow and there are different patterns and ways that we grow. I want you to look at a couple of the things that we, how we should grow. First thing is, is we should grow physically. We should grow in size. We should grow up. We should grow. Now, listen, I know that there are different standards and ways that things grow, but we should grow physically. Next, we see that it, we should grow emotionally. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> Turn to that person sitting beside you and said, I'm waiting. <laughs> emotionally, we don't grow maybe the way that we should, and sometimes we, are, we don't grow in the emotional standard. Sometimes we don't grow mentally. Amen. Now look at that other person and say, he's talking to you now. We don't grow the way we should mentally. And then thirdly, we ought to be growing spiritually. We should be growing spiritually. And the problem with it is, is that all of those patterns should be evident in our life. We can see that sometimes we are delayed in our, in our physical growth or our, our mental growth or our emotional growth. Sometimes we, we don't, we're stunted in different things and events of our life. But there are things that happen in our life also that stunt and hinder our spiritual growth. We don't grow like we should. We accept the Lord Jesus Christ and then we don't grow in the word. We don't get in God's word. We don't do what we know to do. We don't, we don't worship the way we should. and We just take it for granted. Well, I'm going to grow. And we become stagnant. And we become stagnant in the way that we should grow and how that we should grow. The Bible tells us this in, in 1 Corinthians, the, the 13th chapter, in verse 11. For those of you who have children, you need to remind them of this, especially if they're grown children. You need to remind them of this scripture. It says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11, it says, When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Women, hit your help, husband right in the side right now. Just give him one of them elbows. I went through this phase where I thought I wanted to get me a motorcycle and go back to my youth where I used to ride and have cool when the wind would blow through my hair, you know, and I would ride and I would, then I'd have all that cool and, and stuff like that. And the church was, Brother Daryl Brown was so good. He blessed me with a motorcycle and I got on that motorcycle and I thought, man, I am 16 again. Look out, world. Except when I rode this time, there was only one hair and the wind just went right around it. So, but it was a different adventure. But after I rode it for a while, I, different things, different circumstances, I realized that I can't go back to that childhood. And as I got older, I realized that I don't need to. I need to push forward. I need to grow up. And sometimes growing up is not always easy for us to do. And sometimes growing is not always the pattern. We'd like to revert to our protective times. We'd like to revert back to those cool times, those times when we were skinny and muscular. Times when we, we, when we were, some of you are still moaning over the last statement there, but so we, we can remember all the way that it used to be and we want to revert back to that instead of going forward. God calls us to grow. God calls us to grow. To grow spiritually. You see, we know what it looks like to 
know in a lot of other ways. We know what it looks like to grow physically. We know what it looks like when you begin to grow and you see that emotionally and mentally. We know what all those boundaries, but what does it look like to grow spiritually? Well, Paul or Peter, when he gives this scripture, he begins to give us some things that begin to help us to understand. But in Ephesians, Paul writes this in the fourth chapter, 11 and 12, he says, he himself gave apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, some pastors and teachers. That is the exclusive work of the church for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the should be and there must be training and teaching to make it available for you and I to grow. Amen? Amen. But no matter what I do spiritually, I cannot make you grow. Amen? Amen. If I, and you and I have the opportunity to grow, but many of us neglect growth and we don't grow the way we should is because we're not in the Word. Come on. We're not doing all the things that we need to do well, listen, one day a week you would be malnutritioned. But some of us, that's the way we live our, our spiritual life. The only time we open our word through the week is on Sunday. Amen. And the only time we're growing is that minute two hour part. <laughs> I almost swallowed my cough drop right there. We get that little window of just a few minutes. In the word, and we expect it to be enough to feed us all week. I, I take this challenge. Treat your spiritual man the way you do your physical man. Amen? Amen. How many of you would, 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 would take this adventure? You would only eat one time this next week. Are all the headphones working? Because I didn't see any blinks. <laughs> Nobody was, here's what happens is, is because the way that we stifle our growth oftentimes happens because we treat our spiritual man differently. And we're waiting on all of it to happen outside of, of the percentage of where we are. You need the message. You need the word. You need it in your heart. I'm not telling you you have to be at service all the time, but you need it. It helps you grow. And, and if you're only coming to the point of studying God's Word, you are missing the opportunity of even what the church can do for you. God has leadership in the church to help it grow. It's 13, 14, same uh, chapter in Ephesians. It says, Till we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about by every wind of doctrine and the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plottings, but speaking the truth in love that we may grow up in all things into Him, the head, Christ. So if you really want to know what spiritual growth looks like, it's when we begin to act like Christ. Now, don't miss. You will never be Christ. There was, Messiah. there was only one Savior. And there have been those who throughout time have themselves as a Messiah or the Savior, but his name is Jesus Christ. He died on a cross for the sins of all mankind. Every color, race, and creed, he died for all of us. And there is not coming another Savior. He is the Savior. But one day he'll sound a trumpet, and then we'll be with him in glory. When we grasp that knowledge, amen, we are to grow and look more like Christ. The old adage that we used to wear the bracelets, and I even have a t-shirt that says, WWJD, what would Jesus do? Sometimes we've got to think about it. Are we acting like Christ would act? <clears throat> Let me put this in a more perspective so it'll touch you. Are we acting like Christ when we drive the, on the freeway? Are we acting like Christ when we're mad at our children? The Bible says, be angry and sin not. Think about that next time you discipline one of them. I'm taken. We must realize what spiritual growth looks like so we know what we're targeted to look like. 
You want me to tell you why so many people emotionally and mentally don't grow up in this country? Is because we don't have an image of what true growth looks like. Amen. Come on, amen. amen. We have adults acting like children. Maturity-wise, we're not there. I thank God that I had a godly father who gave me something to look at that I could say that's what a man looks like and that's what I should act like. Amen. Joe, I'm getting a little mean today. I got to back up a little bit. Teach that love. Preach that love. I want to share with you, when we look at what spiritual growth looks like, then we've got to understand that we must grow. And he says that we must grow. And, and Peter brings us to this point, how we grow. The first thing we must do is grow in grace. Going back to Ephesians, we realize this. In Ephesians, sec, the second chapter, he says, For by grace you have been saved through faith and not of your own selves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. How do we grow in grace? You see, grace is something that was distributed to us by God. For it's God's riches at, at Christ's expense is the acrostic of it. And if you look at the idea of God's riches, what is grace and how do we grow in grace? It's not that we can become more saved. It's the understanding of God's forgiveness of our sins. That grace that God holds not our sins against us. Amen. Aren't you glad this morning that when you accepted the Lord Jesus Christ that your sins were removed. And he no longer looks at your past and holds it over your head. But he says you are my new creature. Amen. You are, a, you are bought by my son's blood. I no longer remind you of your sins. Oh, praise God. I thank the Lord that I can tell you this, that when Jesus Christ saved me, there were some things in my past that I'm glad he doesn't recall. Amen? Now, now God doesn't forget. God knows everything. But he chooses, chooses because of his commitment to us not to ever hold us the sin against us. Now, my wife is the second person that knows but she chooses to hold it against me. <laughs> and she reminds me of it. And I understand that. Making them again. God, in his promise to us, but he says, when we ask for forgiveness, he is faithful and just to forgive us of all of our unrighteousness. Oh, I thank God. You see, uh, the, the, even the, the, there are things in, in my past that, that I know that, that, that they're reminding me of it. Things, in, come on, we, we all have a past. We all came from somewhere. We all grew up from something. But I'm glad, Don, that I don't have to go back and live that past again. I'm glad that I've grown forward in God, that I've become more mature, that I learned how to make smart decisions. Amen. Right. And so through the process, I begin to understand. Growing in grace is to greater understand the forgiving power of God. When we begin to realize this, we walk not in, in our own knowledge of comprehension, but when we walk in the ability to walk in grace, we comprehend the grace and the goodness of God. God loved me even when I was yet a sinner. God loved me. Now, God hates the sin, but he loves the sinner. Amen? Amen? And when I come to this understanding, I can walk in a newness of God because when I walk in his grace, I am not worried about making the same mistake because the Holy Spirit in me directs me away from that. Amen? Right. Amen. Amen. Now, as I was teaching on Wednesday night, I was talking about this on Wednesday night. I said, the thing is, God doesn't take away our privilege of choice. You can choose to go back and do the same things again. But every time you do, you begin to equalize that sin and becomes greater and greater, becomes more involved and more depthful in it. Amen? Amen. I don't want to, why would I want to go back and entangle myself in all the problems that I had when I was, when I was 18? 20 years old, I've learned some things. And, and, and sometimes, I, I, tell, I told my son the other day, I, I took him off and I said, listen, I'm trying to get you to understand, don't make the same mistake I did. Part of the problem with the world today is that growing up means that you're going to have to learn and look at something to make that target. 
Jesus, the Bible says, was tempted in every way that we are, but yet he did not sin. You don't have to sin. Now, this is, this, is, this is, you need to understand God's grace. But God does not understand your retrieving back to sin. He gave you the Holy Spirit to help you walk away from those sins and to transform your life. And if you continue to walk back, it's because you choose to fall back into your sin. Growing means you go forward from that sinful nature and step out of it. And you make a choice continuously to move away from that sin. Amen? Amen. Amen. When I look at this, I begin to understand. Go ahead, Dave. You're two slides behind. Growing in the knowledge of Christ, then, gives us the understanding of growing in the knowledge of Christ. Comprehending who he is and what he is. You see, the greatest thing that we have when we grow is we realize the ability and the power of God. That transforms us. The power of God to move before us. The, the power of in 2 Timothy, the second chapter, verses, uh, verses 15, it says this, Be diligent to present yourselves approved to God. A worker does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. The, the King James Version says, Study to show yourself approved. And come on, how many of you have ever, ever thought about this? Now, I know that there's different ways to accumulate knowledge. One of the greatest ways that I know is to study. Come on. Study, read, rehearse, practice. Come on. All of us have had to do that at a time or two. Come on. You study to show yourself approved. You, you begin to study the word. You read the word. And it begins to give you the support and the knowledge. The more that I read of Christ, the greater I, I am I'm blown away by his ability and his power and his goodness. The more that I read of him, the more that I just, James, I just can't comprehend how big and good he is. When I read about it, it just, it just shocks me how little I know. The knowledge of God, and the more that I know of Him, the greater I understand about His power and His blessings. The more that I know of Him, the more that I'm comprehending of it. Uh, sometimes when we, when we realize this, come on, how many of you, when you were in school, when you, you prayed a lot? I, I prayed, but listen, I had to pray. Pass out a test, I'd say, oh, God, help me. And mainly the reason that I said that was because I didn't study, Chuck. I, I was not studied to prepare myself. And I would show up and I would say, oh, no, I was supposed to have read that? And, and, and a lot of times what we do is we go through life tests. We run into tests. The Bible says that, this, that we are to study so that we could be approved of God. And that approving process is a testing process that God puts us in. You know, we have a few teachers that, that attend our church, and, and one of the things that I ask them before is, do you give tests because you don't like kids? Because you want to see them fail? Oh, you give tests so you can see what they have learned. Yep. So you need to understand that. God is putting you through. Some of you are going through some tests right now. Some of you are being tested so God can see where you are. And see what else he can bring to your life. See what more he can bless you with. And that testing process to so, so that God can give you more. And sometimes when God brings things on us to test us and to begin to try us, we blow it. And, and God can't give us all that he... Listen, he, he, I, I've had people say, Pastor, and, and I never will forget, one time I was in the office in Chandler. And a guy came into the office and, and he asked me, he had a whole handful of... Uh, the lottery tickets. And he come into my office. And he said, are you the pastor? I said, yeah, I am. He goes, will you pray over my lottery tickets? I feel good about this. He, he says, I, I feel if I win, pastor, I'm going to, I'll give, I'll build you a new church. I'll do all that. And he said all this and he had all, all, all them tickets. And he said, just pray over them. Just bless them. So I, being the spiritual man that I am, put my hands on the bottom of his hand and on the top of those lottery tickets. And his eyes was thinking, oh, God's going to do something good here. And I said, oh, God, bless this according to his faithfulness in tithing and giving to your kingdom. 
and his eyes opened up. And you know, if you're real spiritual, you'll open one eye just to kind of see what the other person's doing, you know? So I, I looked at him, and he's looking, he's going... I said, God, if he has robbed you, take this from him and take what he has. And, God, and this guy, I could feel his hands starting to pull back away from me, you know. And I began, and I said, God, according to what his faithfulness is, give according to it. And he said, man, a mean pastor. <laughs> I never saw that guy again. But I can tell you this, that... When we realize that we understand the power of God and the work of God, then we can comprehend the, the hand of God that will bless us. Amen. If you're robbing God, why would he give you more? I hear people say this all the time. Oh, God, if you give me a job, I'll pay. I'll, I'll give to your church. And then we get a job and we never see you again. Is this on? Because I didn't hear a whole lot of amens on that. Oh, God, if you'll heal me, I'll be at church every Sunday. It's so quiet you could hear a pin drop. Because then God turns our life around, turns our circumstances around, touches our body, and then we've got every excuse in the world. Well, I've got this to do, and I've got this to do, and I've got this to do. God has been very good to you. You need to be very good to him. If God has blessed you, you need to bless him. Amen. When God does something in your life, the more that I know of God, the more that I understand of God's blessings. The more that I look at God, He is my source and my strength. He is my promise. He is my friend that is, is with me always. I look at the promises of God, and this book is a promise. It's not a book of rules and regulations to make you fail. It is a book to bless you. It's a book of promise, what God will do for you when you live. And the more that I live according to this, the more blessed I will be. And so I look at this word and I begin to understand it and study it. Philippians 3 and 10, most of you know this by heart. But it is that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being conformed to his death. You see, we want to know God, but we want all the fluff and the good. We don't want to know his suffering. We, want, we don't want to know his hurt and his pain. Because sometimes God has to take us down those paths so that he can use us for his glory. You might think that God is not loving you the way he should love you and God should do more for you. I can tell you this. The Bible says in all things give thanks. For this is the will of Christ Jesus for you. When we look at our spiritual growth, we've got to understand God is working for our good, for his glory. In whatever situation we find ourselves in, it is so that we can glorify him. There are three things that I want you to write down. If you have to, on the back of your bulletin, wherever you're taking notes, I want you to write these three things. There are three things about spiritual growth that I am sure of, and I'm, I'm about to close. So, Roberto, wherever you are, there is my magic man. With the, he plays the keyboard. This, he knows how to play shut down music faster than anybody. I was going to say shut up, but that's a bad word according to my grandson. So. First of all, there is no age limit to growth. We all should be growing continuously. How many of you know that when you were a child, you didn't come out the size that you are now? You come out at that cute little seven, eight, nine. God help your mother, ten pounds. However big you were when you were born and the size of the baby that you came out to be and you begin to grow into the adult that you are and you grow and you mature and you get bigger and we continue to grow. Now some of us, like me, I stopped growing in eighth grade. I didn't, I'm not any taller than I was when I was in the eighth grade. And I just, I'm still growing. Growing with and emotionally I grow emotionally every time that as a pastor your your mind and your emotions are expanded go through it I go through it with you and, and sometimes it stretches us and sometimes it stretches all of us but God is faithful God is good and God will will see us through and God wants us to when we go through those things he wants us to grow those things Amen? And, and growing spiritually is no different. You should be growing continuously. 
Uh, if you've been saved, maybe you just got saved, maybe you've been saved for years, but you never stop growing. Brother Farr, I'm, I'm not going to pick on you about your age, but I can tell you this. This man studies the Word of God, and every time when I talk to him about it, he says he learns something new when he reads. When you open a book, God feeds you. You grow yep. and you should continue to grow continuously. Yep. Amen? Amen. When, now, now, yes, there are things that we relearn and we understand and we, be, we continue. But we should be growing spiritually every day. Yep. Every day is a new day. Every day is a new experience. Every day is a new blessing. Every day God brings us new things. Amen? We should be growing and giving him glory and honor and praise. Amen? Amen. We should grow continuously. Growth is something that is, is more important spiritual growth than it is physical growth. It is more important for you to grow spiritually than it is any other way to grow. Amen. I love it when I see children through the children's church programs. Sister Andrea used to take our kids and, and she would take them and they learned the word and they knew the word. And, and when, when somebody would come up to them, they knew the word. There are so many that just play games with our kids. And that's not what, that's not what children's church is about. There's so many people that want to go to a church where it's all about the worship. And I'm going to tell you something. That's great. But if you're not growing in the word and you're not getting the word, you are dying spiritually. You need that in your life. The third thing is this. Our faith is directly related to our spiritual growth. As I grow spiritually, my faith grows with it. If you've been walking with the Lord very long, you've been stretched. <laughs> I don't know. Has anybody in this place, are you with me when I, I'm saying this? Because if you've walked with the Lord very long, your, your faith has been stretched at times. You, your, your faith has been, your, your spiritual growth, you, yeah, listen, I've served the Lord for this many years, and I'll tell you something, when I look at somebody, I know that they have been through some things. They've had to walk through some storms. They've had to walk through some pains and some hurts. But God is faithful. And they've learned that. And they know that. And through their spiritual experiences, they can say, God is good all the time. And they can say it and they mean it because they've experienced it. Yep. As they grow and they go, I'm going to tell you something. The, the more that I learn of him and the more that I know of him, the more that I walk with him, the more that I realize of his power and his grace. The longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. Amen? When we look at this, go ahead, the last slide there. Things that hinder our growth. I'm going to cover this just real quickly. That scripture that Peter wrote is part of that verse in verse 17. That's why he didn't just say grow, but he said there are things that hinder our growth. Beware lest you also fall from your own steadfastness. The assurance that you've got it all figured out is the automatic opportunity for Satan to cause you to fall. When you think you can handle it, you are in for a storm. There's an old song we used to sing that says, learning to lean. Learning to lean. When I watched the other day, when the storms blew in and the, the storms were blowing the trees, they blew a few of the limbs off in our tree, a pretty good size ones. We had to cut them up. And, but I watched that same storm and those palm trees, the tall, real tall, skinny ones, they would bend and bend and bend. And all of a sudden, when the wind would stop, they could stand straight again because they'd been through the storm. And they knew. They knew it. I'm going to tell you something. When you've been through the storms with Christ, you can make it. You can make it. But when you try to hold on and you become stern and steadfast, you become uh, 
unopportunistic for God to work in you. In, in your own steadfastness, you become arrogant. That term right there, be, be, beware least you fall into your own steadfastness, is the arrogance of someone who believes that they can handle it without God's help. We must realize and learn that we cannot do it with our own. We must realize that we must learn to lean on Him and depend on Him. Then second, uh, the final point of this is this. The way that we, things that hinder our growth is being led away with the error of the wicked. When we don't know the truth, we will fall for the lies of the enemy. Let me tell you why we're seeing some of the things that are literally falling apart. In the, when, when you can twist scripture to accept something that God says he hates and you think it's acceptable in God's sight, you are twisting the truth. If God says he hates it, then he means it. If you are living in this wicked world and you are falling into the trap of accepting the wicked of it and you are tolerating it, then you are living a lie. Listen to what I'm saying. This is important for you right now. If it was wrong then, it's wrong today. Now God is a God of love, but God hates sin. And sin separates us from the love of God. And if you're trying to justify sin, God will not accept that. And if there's sin in your life today and there's sin that's, that's, that you're working with and you're trying to figure it out, don't try to justify your sin. Ask God to forgive you of it and move forward from it. Don't fall into this trap. Listen, I, I, I was talking to a fellow minister at a minister's meeting, and we were sitting there, and he was talking about, he said, I believe that we've got to accept everybody that God, God accepts, and, and we've got to love. And, and he was talking about the predominancy of, of a homosexual couple, and, and he said, we, 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 we don't believe that preach condemnation I said then they will never change if you don't say sin is sin you will never you will never break the bondage of the sin in your life Amen. if somebody doesn't tell you that sin is sin then you will continue to live in that sin and it will separate you from the love of God and the hardest thing for me as a pastor to do me as a dad to do me as a husband to do is to say sin is sin, it's wrong. Yep. Sometimes it's the hardest thing for me to do when I look in the mirror and I say, you need to do this. You need to change your ways. Amen. It's easy for me to point out the faults of everybody else. Come on. Amen. I can look at somebody and say, hey, you're doing wrong. You're doing, oh, you're this. And I can see. Sometimes I have to look in that mirror and say, hey, you need to straighten your life up. You need to live right. You need to make right choices. When I begin to look at that, I begin to realize that I can't fall in the path of accepting the wicked and living like the wicked. I, the Bible says, come out from among them and be separate. Be different. We ought to look different. We ought to act different. Why? Because we are different. And it should be that we are different. What are you doing today to grow? I wanted to show a video. I have the, I don't, the rest of you may have an argument about this, but I believe I have the cutest grandchildren in the world. Uh, my grandson, Carson, when he was about two years old, two and a half, maybe three, they say he acts like me and looks like me because he's loud and talks all the time. I don't know why they say that. But he was sitting there and he was singing a song. And, and, and that song said, um, I'm trying to remember how it goes. I, I wish I could have played it. If you want to grow, you've got to pray and read your Bible every day. And you'll grow, grow, grow. Pray every day and read your Bible and you'll grow. He said it much cuter than I did. But I can tell you this, if you're not growing, 
you are dying. Spiritually, if you're not growing, you're beginning a process to die. You should be growing. You should take the, the, the point of where you are right now. And I ask you this question, are you growing? Have you grown since you met Christ? Are you growing in your spiritual walk with Him? Are you still stumbling over the same sins? Are you still struggling with those things that you, you dealt with when you came to Christ? Or have you made that step to grow? Right now, I believe it's time. This, this, little, this little short pastor came by to tell you this. It's time for you to start growing again. Amen. And growing in Christ. Amen. Right. Grow in Him. Stand with